ready in 5, 4, 3, 2. With me is Duncan Trussell. Hi, Mommy. You're about to have a baby any minute. Well, not you. Not me. Your partner. Did you know the straight people are calling their spouses partners now? It's like what the Gen Zers do. Yeah, partner. Is there a, <laughs> there isn't a, like, you can't come up with a more unromantic <laughs> term. My partner. My, my partner. Your construction partner. No, my partner. My partner. Your software engineer partner. You're banging your partner. <laughs> You're coming on your partner's face. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? Capitalism's so fucked up when, like, business That's terms true. get in, into the family. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think of it that way. Call That's it something else. Yeah, your sergeant. Why not call it your sergeant? Well, yeah. <laughs> like, your why? romance sergeant. It's like when, um, remember in the corporate world, they would call you guys team members? The oh, team boy. member. And you're Ugh. like, Nick, we're not on a team. This isn't a team. This ain't no fucking team. We're not playing volleyball. <laughs> It's blockbuster. Making widgets. Okay, let me uh, let me do some dates here. Uh, I literally have like 10 tickets left for Toronto September 7th. Get them now. Nice. I'm, I'm not going to add a show. Who's going to work that? Should add a show. Ugh. Win it, Winnipeg, will he peg Canada September 8th? He will. <laughs> uh, Comedy Vox, Denver downtown. Best club ever. Oh, Comedy Vox is the best. Uh, and then I do Wise Guys and Short Lake Titties, Puta. I know. October 13th, 14th. San, San Jose Improv. What's that one? San Jose. San Man, Jose. Josie. Man Josie. San. Don't ask me. <laughs> San Jose. San Jose. San Jose. And then Comedy Club on State, Madison Jizz Concert. Now, I, that Comedy so Club good. on State has the best green room. I can't remember. It. It's been so long. Tell Unless me. I'm getting it confused. Remember, tell me. And I and I could be wrong about this, so I'm sorry if it's not the greatest green room. But as I recall, that green room, Todd Glass <gasps> helped them design the green room. So Perfect. like you know how Todd Glass will like fix yes. like at a festival if anything's out of place, he will come in, fix the mic, fix the lighting to the best of his ability, lecture whoever fucked up the mic, explaining why yeah. it's more than a mic and it's more. But he apparently helped form that green room. So it is insane. You don't want to leave the green room. Okay. I can't wait to see that. It's been a while since I've been there. Love so that I'm, club. I'm so I'm so fucking pumped. I haven't seen Todd Glass in a minute either. Yeah, I talked to him uh a little bit ago. Uh, but yeah, I mean, well, we're in Texas. You know, he's still in LA. Oh yeah, he's still in LA. Buy my lipstick. Christina Fee Online. You got your own lipstick? Oh my god, do I? See, Duncan, I've been wearing red lipstick since I was 13 because wow. I'm a whore. And I developed the most perfect shade, consistency, even this cap. Bro, look at that. Oh, shit. Wow. It's got a magnetic wow. jammy on it. Boom. So the shit does not open in your purse. I know you carry a purse. And Yep. Do you care? I, I could see you carrying. Oh, it. my lipstick opens in my purse. <laughs> like you're already having a bad day. Your <laughs> heels broke, and then your freaking yeah. lipstick melts <sighs> all over your ketamine. <laughs> I love you so much. Can I tell you why I love you? Why? Many. I mean, there's so many love reasons. You too. But I watched the congressional hearing on. U sorry, UAPs. UAPs. They're not UFOs anymore. And I was so pumped. I listened to the lives, the thing, and I was I was in California, and I was like, who can I speak to? Who in this fucking universe is as geeked as I am? And I called you. Honored. And I go, Duncan, are you watching this? And you go, yeah, man, I'm streaming it right now. <laughs> yes. I'm in the skiff recording a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. tried to live stream it so I could have some company <laughs> while I was watching it. And I think I just annoyed people. No one wanted to hear me <laughs> rambling over what could be the most, you know, the, one of the greatest events in American, if not human history. But it was fun to watch. It's amazing. Amazing. And you know, it's so interesting. I think the most interesting thing about it is that nobody gives a shit. Yep. Which is really fascinating because if this had taken place in the 1960s, 70s, even the 80s. 90s maybe before yeah. social media this may have been a big deal for those of you who don't know what we're referring to there was a congressional hearing on july 26 with this guy named david grush commander Priv Fravor. uh-huh and then what's the other dude's I name i can't remember that i guy. mean these are decorated military air force men 
David Grush served as the head of the special forces for alien retrieval, yep. whatever the fuck weird things. Yep. And these men are under oath. Under oath. Go to jail if you lie. Yes, saying not only have we seen multiple UAPs, UFO, uh, we have, he says, non, what is it, non- Bio- biological, non-human. Biologics. Biologics. Sounds like a, like a, a smoothie company. <laughs> it's delicious. I like my strawberry biologics. Strawberry biologics. <laughs> but also, for those of you who think I'm crazy, the Pentagon confirmed there's three leaked videos of UFOs. You can go to fucking Wikipedia. Confirmed that those are, in fact, unidentified aerial phenomenon. So this is one of the most mind-blowing things, and yes. nobody cares. Well, it's a lot. <laughs> Let's unpack it. It's it's a lot. Like, I mean, I like, you know, people like us, we're interested in things like this for better or for worse. And I I think that that most people, they're just trying to like live their lives. Yes. And what this represents is a complete radical paradigm shift for anyone trying desperately to live in default reality, which is like a collapsing mind shaft default right reality now. is a co- it is i agree there used to be a strong sense of default reality yeah. because it was provided by a primary narrative giver the i.e the media the news everybody watched tom brokaw everybody watched what 247 yep uh, channel 11 channel 13 you got your set radio yeah cha- and that's it that's it that's who disseminates reality that's and right now now it's all over the place and, wild and then you 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 really like you know, I have compassion for them because it's like there's a huge amount of investment in like subscribing to default reality. Like you really have to like, <laughs> be- you have to like really avoid thinking about <laughs> so many things. I know. And I, I seek out since I was very young. This is since I was, I remember being conscious, have always sought out the opposite of whatever default is. Because yeah. I, I said, this is so fucking boring. Yeah. Yes, I'm stressed out about paying the bills, but I can't live in this. I'm so depressed. Well, there, but you know, there's Ugh. also just a general sense. But anyway, not that I'm so brilliant, but you, I just were bored. I, I don't think it's a, you know, I think you are brilliant. I don't think, thanks, you, I think you can be fully invested in the cult of default reality and be brilliant within that like reality tunnel and or a complete idiot and i think you'd be outside that reality tunnel and and be a complete idiot or yeah. be completely brilliant i don't think it's a mark of intelligence necessarily but some people that we have this sense like an innate sense that there's more going on than meets the eye here that there's more going on than like liking the golden girls and <laughs> you know what i mean like in like you know, thinking like, you know, Applebee's is not bad. <laughs> yeah. Although, right, not to poo-poo those things, because those things are all amazing. And I, I was like an that. Applebee's waiter. <laughs> oh, you were? I was a teammate. <laughs> a team member. <laughs> a team member. That's. Did you like that gig? I did. What I, were the perks? Did you get free meals on your shift? Well, I was a dishwasher before. I was an Applebee's dishwaster before I became a, a server. It, one of my favorite jobs in my life, like the most, you, it's so great. Dishwashing? Like, oh my God. That was the best? Oh my it's God. It's so funny what it, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so like you get into this rhythm, you, there is weirdly a hierarchical structure to like the dishwashers working in any given place. Cause like inevitably there's one dishwasher who is supernatural in their ability to <laughs> do dishes. Like it's, yeah. you feel like you're watching Tiger Woods play golf yes, or something. Yes, like they're I know so about. good. <laughs> And, uh, and, and then when you start getting into the rhythm of washing dishes, it's, there's something really what you're touching water. Sure. And also it's like, if you meet a girl and she is like into you after you're like, yeah, I'm a, I wash dishes at Applebee's. She loves you. She loves you. That bitch loves you. It loves you. And, and so, the, so you know what I mean? Like you, you, you're forced out of all the weird pride shit that goes into other jobs. Well, hold on. By that you mean gay pride. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Thank you for clarifying. God, that's kind of a good game, though. I like your game. Think about this. You're a young, I'm assuming you were young when you young. did that. Yeah, you ain't got shit anyway. Nobody at like 20 or 19 has anything. But if you lead with that, you're like, I'm, I'm just a dishwasher at Apple. But you don't go, I'm just a dishwasher. You're like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm a dishwasher at Applebee's. And yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm a hustler. Yeah, you have to work so fucking hard to wash dishes at Applebee's. 
Well, I mean, yeah, it is a, hard, a tough job. It's a hard job and you get into a rhythm and you, but, it, and you like, you just, I don't know. There's so much, there was like a lot of freedom in that. Now it's, I might be looking at it with rose colored glasses. Maybe back then I was in a, a legitimate hell yeah, state yeah. and I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I loved it. <laughs> Had a roommate, was going to community college, didn't give a <laughs> shit about anything, lived in a tiny little, tiny little room and my friend's house was just getting blasted on acid constantly <laughs> and like no real true aspirations for anything other than just like i don't know i guess this is what i do it was one it was like <laughs> really a good time yeah it was quite wonderful well now yeah looking back because now you've got your life together and in order and you know yeah I, the best the best worst i've had a lot of good bad jobs the one of the best worst ones was in college all four years i had a work study job where I, I sat in a parking booth, like, you know, those boxes, those parking boxes. Yes. And I just gave, I sold parking to students. Whoa. So good. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And like, it wow. was, it was a powerful job because it was in San Francisco where parking is a very yeah. rare commodity. And I would, um, you know, it was Department of Public Safety, shout out to USF, uh, DPS. And I got to wear the windbreaker and, you know, um, I would give preferential parking to teachers I enjoyed more. Nice. Be like, you can park in the U lot, dude. Fuck yeah. That's up closer to the classrooms. Um, and I got to smoke cigarettes on my shift in the box. Glorious. Read books, talk to people. My friends would come by and socialize. I drink beers Glorious. on Friday night. Like, it was fucking rad, dude. Glorious. Yeah. That is badass. I, that yeah. was it. Was the booth air conditioned? No, but it was San Francisco, so you only had like two or three hot days, and I had a tiny little space heater for when it was cold. But you're talking like literally a booth that's well, I don't know dimensions. This literally this, you know, you just just you. So they it was pretty nice and whatever. Warm. So you got the look where people completely dehumanize you. Is they you know what I mean? You got yes. that like weird thing where like where you, you saw the, yes. like, them going to NPC mode. What's that? non-player character in a video game is what they call it where like it's we all do it you go robot yeah and when you're you know, most like in the in the tra transactions throughout the day yes yes it's very interesting because i think that job i did it for so long was so humbling that i'm very cognizant of people that work in service and in booths and boxes yeah. and these odd places and ballet guys and the guy that because you're just like I, well, you've been there you know how awful that can be yep uh that's yeah. the gift yeah but and you know and it but and also like you know when you're like mentally contorted over problems that lots of people <laughs> would give anything to have, you know what I mean? And, yes. And you realize, even though I'm I'm I have all this stuff and I'm so lucky, somehow I'm like more stressed out and freaked out than I was when I was a dishwasher. Like when I was mm. a dishwasher. I felt the way mm -hmm. that I fantasized that like wealthy people would feel. You know mm. what I mean? Like this kind of like, I'm fine with life. This is where I'm at. I know what I have. I, I'm fine. That's true. And you know what I mean? It's like you can get so warped mm -hmm. as you progress in your life. And if you have some ups, you can get really like, it's a, it's almost a trap. I know. It can be a trap. A wonderful it's... trap. Glad to be trapped in it. Yeah. Not bitching about my particular trap, but... <laughs> I do, I can remember like sometimes it's, it's like, in, like the, the, a, a weird peace would fall upon me in those moments yes. where I had nothing. Yes, I know you're talking about, because you knew exactly how much you had in your bank account. You knew that you had, you know, whatever, or $200 or you, there was limits on things, but then the potential was unlimited, right? Yeah. Your imagination Oh my gosh, one day I might do that. Or I might go there. I might do that. And then as you get older, you start to realize these potentialities and you experience them and you go, oh, is that all there is? Oh, that's all. Oh, okay. So that was that. Close, check. Right. <laughs> check. Now what? And then I find myself enjoying stuff I enjoyed as a child now more than ever. Yep. The atelic, I think it's the right word of like. Atelic. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and watch grass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking care about anything anymore. Yeah. And the aliens and our alien overlords. And our aliens. Watch grass. Wait for the aliens. <laughs> try to call the orbs. <gasps> try to communicate with the aliens if you can. I Reach want those out. orbs. I want to do the um, astral meditation, the astral plane. I want to get out there, man. I want to talk to other beings. You know, okay, here's a little annoying spiritual story. And stop me if I already told you this. Go ahead. So 
the first time I met Ram Dass, the yes, I loved him. Be I, here now. Be here now. Incredible spiritual leader. For spiritual those leader. Yeah. And we it was a Zoom call, and but because I figured out on their website they had these things called Heart to Heart with Ram Dass, and it's like you don't have to pay for it. What? You just sign up, and I'm like, this can't be real. So I just signed up, and then yeah, I get this like. I'm scheduled that my phone rings. It's like, Duncan, it's Ramdas. Are you ready? I'm like, well, yeah. And then there he is, Ramdas, glowing, radiant, beautiful, big smile. Like I'm in, I'm in the shittiest apartment of my life. Roaches, <laughs> mattress on the floor, like a horrible fucking place. Like my neighbors thought the hallway was a third bedroom. <laughs> Oh, fuck. They would like put, I'm not joking, yeah. they would put their kid's crib oh. in a bookshelf in the hallway and oh, extend. No. I didn't, it was cool. It's kind of nice walking by a baby yeah. on your way back in a bookshelf. It kind of made the hallway look cool, but that was the kind of place it was. And uh, and I wasn't miserable about that. I didn't like the heat because it, the window. Where aired, were you living? Echo Park. Oh, yeah, it gets hot in the summer. Calumet was the road. It, but anyway, I, yeah, so uh, there he is. That's and amazing. So, you know, not really understanding what it, a guru actually means. Like just, you know, everyone kind of, it's like kind of like you want to meet your soulmate. It'd be nice to meet your guru. So I was like, Ram Dass, are you my guru? And he goes, he has a big smile. He goes, yes, now what? And it was the best response because it's like, yeah, what changed? Yeah. Nothing, you're still where you are. This is exactly, you know. Oh, wow. And I think the UFOs, that's kind of how I yes. feel about the, the, if we do get ultimate disclosure, we're now part of a great galactic <sighs> empire. We have been chosen. We went through the in initiation, whatever they were looking for. We, we hit whatever watermark they, we needed to hit for them to say hello. Now they're here. The ships start showing up. They become completely normal. We redirect air traffic because now we have to deal with the oh, UFOs. So great. Aliens waddling around everywhere. I can't wait. Yeah, but how long before we're like, eh. and, uh, fucking aliens. And then, yeah, and then we start having alien jokes. Yeah, yeah, and making, yeah, I know. I know, alien traffic, it's going to be so annoying. We've got our energy cubes. We no longer are connected to the grid. We can have infinite energy the sources. The anti-gravity technology I really want. I do too, but now what? Like you've been able to fly around on a cool little disc. You flew over the pyramids while you were high. I know. All the shit you fantasize. Now what? That's what Ram does always. I remember there's a talk I listened to where he's like, you go to the movies, you watch the movies, and now what? Let's have ice cream, and now what? Let's go and yeah. drink, and now what? And let's go to sleep, and let's fuck before we go to sleep. Okay, now what? Now I'm gonna take a shit, now what? Now yeah. The end, now what? The end, now what? The next, the end thing, da, da, da. Yeah. It's never, it never measures. It, no, it, it doesn't it, matter. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't really, no. I, I think it's like the double-edged sort of being human is we're so good at adapting to stuff, which is why there's so many of us on the planet where we can adapt to almost anything. But, but part of adaptation means we get used to mm. anything for better or for worse really quick. So, you know, the internet, there was no internet. The internet shows up, we're like, oh my fucking God, yeah. I can watch porn. <laughs> That's with, primary. Without <laughs> digging through my dad's greasy <laughs> box oh of God. porn. Whoa. Booty B.O. sounds funny, but having it, not so much, dude. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi world's best whole body deodorant. It's clinically proven to control odor everywhere, pits, privates, and beyond for a whopping 72 hours. As an OBGYN, Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Klingman, met thousands of women concerned with odor below the belt. Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the vagina to blame, but bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, a pH-optimized aluminum-free deodorant that actually works and works everywhere with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Special offer, new customers get $5 off Lumi starter pack with code WMMA30 at lumideodorant.com. I love their deodorant. Dude, it lasts for 72 hours, and I like that solid stick one. That's the jam. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with my favorite, the solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code WMMA30 at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code WMMA30.
crazy to think about because you're jerking off to the same stuff your dad jerks off to. Mm -hmm. Did that ever occur to you? Not until later in my life. <laughs> Does that fuck with you? Yeah. I mean, uh, for <laughs> one, now that I have kids, it's like, man, they get into everything. Oh, I know. I'm not leaving my, if I, if there were a box of porn, I'm not going to like <laughs> lazily hide it behind the laundry basket. I know. My dad wasn't very good at hiding his pornography. It was like right next to the, the night, it was in the nightstand. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, just vages with, yeah, dude, bro, I know. Or even like, I would read Playboy magazine while I was taking his shit too, as a yeah. little girl, because it was right fucking right there. Right there. I'm like, dude. Right there. And it's like, <laughs> what are you, what are these old, what are the dads, the 80s? Like, it's fucking dads. What? <laughs> Did they not know that as soon as they went to work, to leave us at the house for eight hours of uh, unmonitored time that like we got so bored all that there was to do is to rifle through yeah, their course. shit like feds just <laughs> everything just right going through literally every drawer for no reason and I then know. there it is i know that this videotape that you Fuck. put in the vcr and suddenly you are watching anal sex as a Fuck. as a 12 year old dude but now it's even younger they're saying today that the kids see pornography at like eight, seven, like on an iPhone. That's not, I don't even let my kids on YouTube, dude. No way. We just watched a guy on your mom's house wax his asshole on YouTube, dude. It's not even taken down. 38 million people have watched it. Is I think that's a fake YouTube. What do you mean it's a fake? So my friend sent me the, the ass waxing video. And for a second, I had the same reaction everyone has, which is like, like wait, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? You say like, the, you say, oh, you mispronounce a word. You're going to get <laughs> potentially your account banned yeah. from YouTube right now. How is this guy? Because it wasn't really like he's just waxing his ass. No, it's everything. He's displaying yeah. his ass, puckering his ass. Like there's yeah. a full ass show and happening. And his dick and balls in the back. I don't want to see this guy's but it, they're very nice, but I have to say. I, smooth. No, he had a great Asian. ass. Yeah, like, great. Yeah, like, like, I, I shudder to think about what my asshole <laughs> looks like right now. I hope I never have to see it. I would have it sealed if I could. Like an old cave, like a dangerous well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in there, Duncan's asshole. Do you think it really looks that bad? Can't Maybe. look good. You're not hairy, though. It's a 48-year-old <laughs> asshole. How can it look good? How many shits is that? Oh my God! How Can many you, shits is that? Can anybody do math really quick? How many shits do you take in a day? It, de it depends, depends on, on the how day. sick I am. <laughs> <laughs> what you've been eating? Yeah, it depends on what I've been eating. It depends on if I'm doing yeah. my laxative diets. You're on laxative. Diets. Oh yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, I take laxatives because it makes me feel in control. You're like a model. That's what girls with eating disorders do. Okay. No, it isn't. What? Yeah. No. What? Well, <laughs> eating disorder? What are you talking about? No, it's it's nothing to do with an eating disorder. When I'm taking my laxatives and, and purging and, and I feel in control. <laughs> like Princess Diana. Wonderful woman. She would go. <laughs> she eats Great all the princess. <laughs> One of the greatest princesses. Here, 17,532 shits. Is what you've taken. Well, that's how many days are in 48 years, so. Let's do like, so, so, so it depends. I've gone through bad phases. So it's like potentially. Let's say 1.5, average <laughs> of 1.5 shits, and that's being generous because there have been like episodes where it's like, man, I'm supposed to shit <laughs> this month. <laughs> <laughs> that's 26,298 shits. Dude, that's so many. Think of that. Think of that Wait, number of shits. What else have you done that free? I mean, you eat, you've eaten more than that, but that's a ton of shits, bro. You slept more than that. God, I love sleeping. It's, it's a lot. So yeah, anyway. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. Like, I, I'm sorry that if my, I don't want my wife to know. I'm sorry. It's no. just like one of those things. It's like my bald spot. I don't have to see it. No, no, I know. I know. It's so funny. I, I was actually looking in the mirror today naked and I was like, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not. I always say to myself, I have a mantra, which is like, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Right. I know it's not the worst. I've seen worse on the internet. Right. I've been to the Schlitterbahn water park. I don't know if you've done that yet with your kids. Not yet. <laughs> you want to see some fat shit? You want to see some people who just got out of jail? Yes. Wow. Wow. On water slides. Woo. That is a slice of humanity where you're like, there's fucking real evil. Like, that's when I start getting weird about like pet.
files and shit. I'm like, oh, right. dude, that guy's a straight. Like, you know, when you look at somebody, you're like, this guy fucks kids. I know he does. Dude, the Schlitterbahn, if you're in, I'm sure you've heard of it if you live in Austin. This shit slaps so hard. It's such a great water park. I highly advise, if you can, getting like the VIP. Wait, hold pass. on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? You just said <laughs> there's convicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pedophiles yes. and morbidly obese people. Yes. They're people who want to fuck your kids. Yeah, go to Schlitterbahn. And you, led to, <laughs> you just led to like a great dad to get tickets. Yeah, because here's the deal. <laughs> Despite all that, it's a fucking feat. The, this park, they really did such a good job. But get the yeah, VIP you passes. You see kids drowning. <laughs> there, there's like, I saw someone drown. spontaneously combust because it's so fucking hot. A kid it's got so ripped <laughs> apart on one of the slides. Now, Schlitterbahn, the best... <laughs> way to get tickets is not how you think you need to get the vip get the vip pass so you can get past all the scumbags yeah that there's it takes you 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 don't have to go through the pile section yeah, of the yeah. park you get you get exempt from the pedo <laughs> the go. well that looks like a great lazy river though look at that yeah this shit's pretty fun man okay let's get into some mom stuff i got some updates uh we've been on vacation even though these episodes have been dropping <laughs> Where do I begin? Please play. I've been dying to play this video for Duncan, the the Disney one. So I've been following this woman on uh, on TikTok. Uh, so in, 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 let me set this up. She she tells you how to maximize your time in amusement parks. Okay. Um, and she has four boys. Okay. So. Boom, here we go. Let's cool. play this for Duncan. I'm just curious. Alias 6, this is how we get early oh, park six. entry to Magic Kingdom. Right before I lay out our outfits, custom park touring guide, and park maps. 5 a.m., mm. Ryan's already worked out. Time for me to get up, work out, and get going. Just a 20 minute workout, and yep. I feel like a million bucks. 5 45, and I get myself ready with festive Disney makeup. Don't forget those mini ears, especially Disney yes. ready. 6 45, I'll wake up the boys. They are pumped for Magic Kingdom. 6 58 a.m., we book the virtual queue for Tron. Got it. Boarding group 8. Then a Genie Plus for Big Thunder. <laughs> then I'll pack up my best cup secret my custom park touring guide and throw it in my folder do the boys hair gel and we are out the door 10 after 7 we order an uber and head down the uber has arrived and we strategically get dropped off in front of disney's contemporary wow. resort <laughs> this walkway is the best way to get you to magic kingdom ahead of the crowd oh my god and we are first in line at the this is what mitch mcconnell heard when he froze and up let us into main street like, us can see head street the time. Uh, castle for an empty park family it's still 7 30 a.m seven dwarfs mine train then at 8 20 a.m the park is officially open we wait no longer than 10 minutes for one of the best rides in the park. <sighs> at at 9.25, I squish the live mice I keep in my pocket. At 9.30, I pray to Satan for forgiveness. At 9.45, I <laughs> you know, I think with these videos, <laughs> I think with these videos, it's not fair. And here's the problem. They don't add the other thing, <laughs> the camera setup. Yo. So when the, she's like, Yo. I'm up at 645. <laughs> I set up my first camera and my lights. And then I right. text my editor and tell him to go fuck himself. I'm not paying him more. And you know what I mean? Like, yes, it, so you much. Know, at, at 942, I think for one moment about the fact that I'm leeching my children's childhood from them and monetizing <laughs> it like some kind of horrific vampire. In 947... Seven, I shave my bush for the 15th time today. <laughs> There's no hair there, but it just makes me stop feeling sad because I'm a vampire mother who just wants to devour my children's <laughs> childhood and make as much money as I possibly can. And 9.49, I look at my bank account. 9.50, my husband walks in and pretends that he loves me even though I've devastated our lives with my self-obsession. <laughs> but I... <laughs> what about that yeah. part? Yeah, I agree. And, and the... Um... Gosh, the anxiety. Can't you feel it? It's palpable. Well, it, it's it's it, palpable. This okay, so this is horrific. What's the fear? She's gonna miss out on the fucking uh teacups? What yeah. does she need to itemize and um, get up? But the part yeah. that, that really gets me is she wakes up early for her workout, the twenty minute workout. That she in abs, I feel great. She doesn't need to do that. You're going to Disneyland. The whole day is a workout, an epic walking. Right. Why are you doing this to yourself? Well, I mean, it's got to feel good to torture normal people with your <laughs> bullshit monetized hell life. Like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like a D, okay, you see a demon, right? A real demon gets out of a crack in hell and you're, you watch and you're like, why is that demon dismembering that old man? You know what I mean? It's, that's what it does. It's like that Chris ah. Rock joke about the tiger. You know, right. that tiger didn't go crazy. The tiger went tiger. You know, when it's I, true. So I think when you're seeing this, 
the meta story behind it, oh which is um, like it was already awful traveling <laughs> with Four my kids. mom. Yeah. As a kid, remember if your mom was in a hurry, uh, yeah. bless you. If your Thanks. mom's in a hurry, if your mom, remember the weird anxiety your mom would have about going to the airport and all of that? Of course. And how much it hurt and how brutal it was and how freaky. Terrible. Imagine this mom oh. filming everything Every you do. I hate it. Every, that's not Disneyland. You're working. You're a working, unpaid yes. child actor, not protected by yes. union regulations. Yes. And you, as soon yes. as you find heroin, Oh, you're gonna the kids are gonna do it. Get, get to the photograph that we end on. Look at can I tell you that there is not one image of my children and me w at the end of that video where the, where everyone's standing, everyone looks clean, and everyone's smiling. Like not one photo. Even when we hired a photographer once to take our photos, it's like my the LS is leaning forward, like yeah. ah! one kid's got like a loaf of bread in his hand for some reason. Yeah. This is impossible to achieve. Well, that is not real that's some kind of also you know what it's like what you're doing there is you're like at 9 28 i pose for a picture with my yeah. children to make sure that the 20 percent pedophiles that have been right. documented to watch right. the youtube videos i'm right. monetizing from right. get a good <laughs> look at my kids and know exactly where we are in case oh, they yeah. have a chance to snatch them yeah. yeah yeah what about that that's another thing you know look at the stats on how many pedophiles yeah. are watching TikTok. Oh yeah. And then ask yourself, is it worth the money? Yeah. Knowing that like who's watching this? Oh, you don't know what creeper is watching this like, kids. What is the assumption? You've got people like us watching it and being like, God, maybe this is hell. And then <laughs> you've got another swath of people being like, well, I'm a failure. Maybe I'll kill myself. <laughs> and then the rest are powerhouse. That is Duncan Trussell, everybody. You want to plug some dates? I mean, that was like such a thorough analysis. Thank you. Dude, you fucking nailed it. Well, you know, my wife alerts me to this stuff. She feels very strongly about how rotten it is. And so we yeah. have conversations about just like, you know, and, and, and what will come will be some form of protection for these poor children who not who don't aren't don't have the ability to consent to this. Oh yeah. Who are being emotionally manipulated. Of course. Because like if you're like being run around and at some point God. You say to your mom, mom, I, I kind of just want to be a kid and enjoy my childhood. These cameras <laughs> are everywhere. They will, they probably will say something. I mean, I don't know this story, but they will probably say something like, okay, yeah, we can do that. I'll, I'll turn the cameras off, mm -hmm. but uh, they're going to turn the power off. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. going to have to move. You wanted to go to college. There's four of you. Uh, yeah, I guess we don't need to go to college. Yeah. I'll go back to working at the gate. Yeah. <laughs> the parking box yeah, we'll go back to working at the parking box <sighs> yeah, i guess the ranch well it's, it's you know it's interesting you, you bring up a really good point because remember that show john and kate plus eight on the learning channel when it used to be called the learning channel yeah right and they elected to have you know multiple children and as a justification it was like well we have to have this reality show because we have eight children to support and it's like the chicken and the egg right so as a viewer you're like well they're profiting they're paying for their eight fucking kids but at the same time right. exploiting eight fucking kids yeah. and now they're adults and one of these children i just read is now very he's a very mentally ill guy and he's writing yeah. letters to the father and he's institutionalized and all that it's like it is just so inhumane to put your children in the spotlight. I mean, you and I do it electively, but we've also been doing it as a slow, a slow trickle, a slow drip. I don't put them in the spotlight. I would never put my children on social media. But I'm saying like you and I elected to do comedy, let's say. Yeah. We've been doing it for so long that like you can say whatever you want. I don't fucking care your right. comments or you, you hate me. <laughs> okay, hilarious. Right. I don't care. Right. But to a kid? No oh way. Oh my God. This is terrible. And what about that? What about that? What about the fact that at oh some point their friends are going to find thousands of hours of them online and, oh it, and, and their bully is going to find some embarrassing moment and oh show no. it to the class? What about all that? Like all oh no. of the things, it is just so warped. And I guarantee in the next 10 years, hardcore legislation, some kind of regulation will be passed. I hope so. Because also it's like with a child actor, that I don't know how they do it exactly, but I think that money goes to a trust. Yeah, yes, Rob Eiler, uh, not today, pal. They have a podcast. He and Mary, Mary, my fuck, Jamie Lynn Sigler. Sorry, guys. I was thinking of Mary Lynn Rice Cup. 
Uh, they have a podcast called Not Today Pal, and they are both child stars on Sopranos. And yes, there is a fund that the money gets put into so that your parents can no longer rip you off, and then you end up penniless. And exactly, drug yeah, yeah, because it's like what you yeah. graduate, and what do you got? You don't even oh own God. the account. You don't own the Instagram account. You've got no. nothing. And now that you're like, now that, that, that you, you've grown up, nobody wants to see your ass at Disneyland, <laughs> all depressed, pentagram tattoos on your face. Like Amanda Bynes. Yeah, it's so funny, too, because, um, you know, Disney's the happiest place on earth. And somehow this woman managed to suck all the joy and spontaneity out of the day. Oh, yeah. At 840, we're in line. And then we get the early pass for the thing. It's like, God damn, dude. Yeah. How did you suck joy out of the happiest fucking place on earth? You fucking. Anyway, to, to let's do the opposite, though. Four boys going to Disneyland. You kind of do need to be organized. Like, you do sure. need some kind of structure. Sure. Fuck, but I don't know about building itineraries. I mean, could come on. Come on. I mean, yeah. You, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't be organized as a parent. You definitely should be organized as a parent. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And, and, you know, I remember, as a dad, I can remember, like, because my wife was an, a nanny, and she understands, like, yeah. about the deal. And, like, I can remember, like, all right, let's go to the <laughs> playground. And she would look at me like, are you fucking serious? You said that in front of them? Yeah. You know how, like, their nap time is in an hour. Yeah. You know what that means. Yeah, you, you don't just up. go to the player. Oh. You got to get the EpiPen, the uh, diapers, the lotions, uh, the salves, the balms, water, uh, all of this stuff packed up. And then, like, deal with the, the inevitable, like, breakdown that's going to happen somewhere in there. Uh, You're going to forget something and all the stuff. I didn't know that. So I'm not... I know you have to be organized to, to do this oh. stuff, but add to it. The, it's just, it's so dishonest. Show me the camera. I know. Film yourself setting up the tripod. I'm up at 4 a.m. Who's the, filming the it? Film the tripod. Film the Ugh. setup. Film that part. Show me all that. Show me the editing. When you get back from the from the from from <laughs> Disneyland and your kids would like a bedtime story, be like, this is great content. I've got to get it up right away. Just so go the psychotic. fuck to bed. So Put psychotic. YouTube on. We don't know what else is going on. But just so, yeah. So to, to address the people who are in the category that Duncan said, which is really easy to fall into, especially for mothers, where you're like, wait, why don't I have an itinerary for my four children? Why didn't I wake up at 4 a.m. to do 20 sit-ups and get the perfect workout? Because it's not fucking real. And it's, it's, just, real. it's insanity. So we also have a footage of her non-Disney day routine. Let's take a look what life is like. Four boys, this is our summer morning summer. routine. So this is vacation. Monday, I wake up summer. at 5.15 a.m. I immediately put my workout clothes on, Two brush shots, my teeth and make shots. my bed. I try to read for a couple minutes every morning. I drink an AG1 Four for nutrition, shots. an element for electrolytes, and I'll sip on this throughout Six the day. Shots, Since it's Monday, shots, I finalize our weekly family schedule called the Rabled Roundup, fucking, print it, then take it to the fridge. I place a grocery order from Whole Foods based on the meals shots. in the Whole weekly Whole Foods shots. for a family of my six? Workout, 20 minutes Whole on the foods. treadmill and 14 minutes high intensity on the floor. I never <laughs> miss a workout because it makes me feel good. I take a cold shower. If you haven't read about the benefits, definitely check it out. Where's her then husband? I get myself ready for the day. All Every time single day. If no I'm kids ready, running I feel in? like my life is organized How? even where, if it's where not. Where are your fucking kids? Where are the kids? Myself, I am more than ready to take care of my boys. Okay, well, I'll put away the laundry and make the beds in each of their rooms. My boys can help if they want, but I don't force it. I like it to be a certain oh, way. Oh yeah, that's honestly, just how I'm boys are always, the always on act like that. My crew. In the words of Admiral Hugging McKinnon, each other all day long. To change the world, start off by making your bed. They love to make their bed. sense of pride and it will encourage you Okay, so first of all, this is if you have small children, it's absolute bullshit. First of all, they're fucking screaming and running into your room at 6 a.m. If you're lucky, like on if a you're good lucky. day. That shit's not happening. You're not waking up. You're not doing your workout and then ad addressing your children. You, you, That's you, crazy. It's You are it's awoken crazy. by maniacs yeah. that you love more than anything yes. on earth. Yes. But maniacs. Maniacs, yeah. And like my, <laughs> my kid will like police knock on the door. <laughs> Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Like all the like stoner drug prohibition shit comes up as I'm well, go, oh, cops, they got me. Oh, shit. And then, you know, he'll, he's so, he was wonderful. He'll be so excited. Like, you know, I, I, honestly, I'm not going to do it because, like, not, I, this is, I'm sorry if this seems like virtue signaling, but we did make a decision to not even t try to not even tell too many stories about him. Like, cause that's not consensual. Oh, you know what I mean? Of course. I, I listen, I'm on the same. Yes, I agree. But, but, uh, but, yes. but yeah, it's, so it's exhausting. Like, in moms, I'm like, you know, yeah, this, that, this is the other, like if the aliens yeah, are go ahead. feeding on our <sighs> suffering, 
then this lady they works for it. them. <laughs> she's the alien. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, no, it's just it. like as a mom, she as a parent, it. the last God thing you damn. need to, is another reason to feel guilty. There's already enough reasons I know. that pop up uh, that make you feel guilty as a parent that think that you're not like it, like doing ice baths and cocaine enemas or whatever this lady's doing. You're just. I don't think she's really doing cocaine. No, no, no. I don't know. It's just very interesting. The the need to portray it as, I don't know. I guess I don't understand. I don't know. But whatever. Listen to the voice. Listen to the rhythm of her voice. It says it, bless you. Listen to the rhythm of her voice. That rhythm, that weird. I wake up at 5 a.m. and I had my my shake because there's nothing better than drinking my mushrooms in the morning instead of coffee. And then I could take an ice bath because it's da 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 Yeah. Can you imagine? That cadence. You know what's scary? Monday, that is called the TikTok dialect. Like you can look it up. It, yes, yes. I try to read for a couple minutes. I try to read for a couple every minutes. Every a couple of minutes. For she reads for two whole minutes. Two whole fucking minutes. That's incredible. <laughs> wow. I mean, if you can do that with two kids or four boys, but da 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 da. How do you read for two minutes? I'm I'm. Listen, my kids wake me up six thirty, whatever, seven in the morning. Mom, mom. One of them pushes an iPad in my face. Can you buy me more Roblox? And the other one is like. I want to cuddle. I want to cuddle. I want to cuddle. It's cu- it's needs from like the minute they open their eyes. Yeah. So I don't know what she, this voodoo this woman has that her kids aren't like asserting needs because she's got not just two babies. There's two other. There's boys. And I got to say this so God that damn, I don't dude. misportray my my wife carries the weight here. Like well, they, they all climb do. on they her. All do. And and uh uh yeah it's and it's it's uh it's it's they the intensity do. uh the intensity of it. Can I tell you something? Uh, Duncan, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I got to say it before. For, I don't feel like the kids want dad. Maybe that's just in our house. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a fuck about dad. It's good, all good. mom. They good, want me. We're done. Me. <laughs> like, hey, thanks for having me you're on just, your show. You're just fucking the sprig of whatever on the meal. You, you know, know what? I'm what? just going to go not, snort some hair when I go to my gar- favorite You're floral. the garnish. <laughs> give me mom. Look, you know what? I'm sorry I interrupted Here's you. the, Continue you know, thing. thank you for interrupting. And I'm sorry. I, 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 you know, I think, I, I must say that I think you're right. And I, but that doesn't mean they don't need dads and it doesn't mean dads play, don't play an important role no, in know. their life. But when people are dying, yeah. when have you ever heard a story of someone dying calling out for their dad? <laughs> That's right. They call out for their mama. That's so true. Mommy, mommy, they don't go, dad, <laughs> dad. I found one of your vapes on the floor. Wait, <laughs> mommy says you didn't do this, which she's right. Yeah. By the way, I got to say this. Yeah. I'm so sorry. What? I do feel like I need to say this. Everyone, I understand this is awful. And I've made mm-hmm. a sacred vow that as soon as the baby comes, sure. these are gone. I just want everybody to know. I don't hey. want to promote this bullshit. It's awful. No and I'm judging. so addicted. And no, it's pathetic. That's okay. Duncan. Sorry. Can I tell you something? You and I are in a shame spiral about. Uh, I'm in a similar shame spiral. I, I honestly, you're 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 about to have your third child. You're right. Yeah. You're you're any any minute, any day, any minute. And you're in a moment of stress. Yes. You're about to enter triage. We know what that newborn phase is like. Yep. It's a nightmare. So you're you're in anxiety. You're in anticipation. What's wrong with soothing yourself? Thank you. With a little something something. Look, every month I get my period. I want to die. You know what I do? I drink. What? I drink. I drink two glasses of wine. And then I flog myself about it because I'm like, I drink too hard right. for like a whole right. week. And then I'm, you know, I'm convinced I'm an alcoholic. Right. You're just getting through a hard time. And when, when you're done, you're done. Thank you. No flogging. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I mean, I just, I, yes, I appreciate that. I mean, that's how I've been looking at it. But um, yeah. yeah, I don't want to admit I'm stressed out. That's the other part of it is like, you kind of want to pretend you're not stressed out. And I'm not, like, it's not. And then I'm it's not. It's a big compl- deal. It's beautiful. It's a big deal. But it's intense. Yeah, it's you're, a beautiful, intense thing. You're, you're on the precipice of bringing in a new life in your yeah. family. And not only that, the dynamic's going to change. Going from no kids to one kids was fucking epic and crazy yeah. and catastrophic in some ways. And then you figure that out and now you're going to add a second. And that's even yeah. a crazy new configuration and now three kids is going to be a new configuration yeah you're 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 about to go into the craziness and i'm trying to level my character up in diablo 4 wow you didn't even mention that bro it's very difficult because of the patch they did but it's i'm working on it you didn't tell me that i didn't want to freak you out or make you feel like scared for me it's like wow then it's really hard it's a necromancer bone build but yeah it's like that's did your wife know 
Oh, she knows. <laughs> she sounds like she loves she it. She loves it. <laughs> Nothing, you know, like a lot of people, I think, in, for, especially for this podcast, a lot of people, uh, yeah. a lot of dads especially, <laughs> they want to spice up their marriage. <laughs> you want to get her wet. wet. But yeah, if you want to spice up your marriage, the best way to do it is get addicted <sighs> to... <laughs> An, a never-ending video game. Yes, women love watching grown adult fathers, by the way, of their in children. In bed. Playing a video game. <laughs> Especially when they have two children, two little kids. It's a delight. Who are needs, just needs. I like, honestly, before, before I started, before I got addicted to Diablo 4, I, I I was feeling I was afraid like I hope Aaron doesn't ever lose his respect for me. I mean, I, I, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, and then <laughs> as soon as she saw me get my first character to level seventy, she wept. Yeah, <laughs> and I know those were tears, tears of pride. Of joy. <laughs> she wept and she ran out the. She ran yeah. outside and like wept. Up. Hey everybody, did you know? Yeah, when my husband comes out of his office after. Um, neglecting or ignoring our family for about 30, 40, two hours, three hours. And he comes out and he's got like a ring, a VR goggle ring. <laughs> Nothing says, yeah, pride. It's hot. I'm excited sexually. It's hot. I appreciate you. When she hears um, me call out from the room because the game crashed when I was about to beat a boss I'd been working on for like a two hours. <sighs> Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? She like, loves that. Well, I try not to vocalize because I think it like makes her like <laughs> feel like sad or for me. You know what I mean? She she wants me to level up. She knows this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get <laughs> right. to the end game <laughs> in this new season. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it's it probably the same way I feel. Like my husband, my children are screaming or running through the house and I'm trying to wrangle them yeah. and it's bath time and our dinner needs to get on the table. And I look over and I see him chuckling to his iPhone, you know, just scrolling, just watching yeah. those LOLs, funny vids. And I'm like, good for you. I'm glad you have that time to yourself. Well, you know, I mean, good I, for you. I get it. I feel like Take you're being a, break. a little, you need a break. I feel like you're being a little sarcastic, but mm. men harvest data. <laughs> That's what we're doing. It's no different than the farmer in the field. Data. It's no different That's than the so... farmer in the field. I'm harvesting <laughs> data for my for com what? comedy. For comedy. For Look, my show. Oh, may I ask you this? So my husband recently, so he was really big into murder shows for the longest time. And he watches his shows as I fall asleep. And so for like so many years, it was like, you know, whatever, murder. I'm trying to say Edgar Casey, but that's the guy that does the, the psychic. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne. Anyway, the point is, for years it was that, and now he switched over into World War II. Is cool. it an inevitability that all dads become fans of Hitler? One hundred percent. It's like if you, the, we know yeah. the way that the caterpillar transforms into the butterfly. Yes. Like yes. We, it's documented. Yes. It's understood. Yes. And in the dad phase, yes. you go from <laughs> forensic files. <laughs> Two, you catch that first glimpse yeah. of like World War II, yes. whatever it was, someone now like uh, Hitler and the occult or whatever. Right. And then you, Ken Burns, World War II, and you, you, or even a World War II movie. It catches your eye. You don't go to it right away. You're like, you know what? I, yeah. I'm going to watch a, a rerun of Forensic Files because sure. by then you've watched them all. More people need to get murdered. You know, you're just waiting for murder to make some more Forensic Files. And <laughs> They're so, yeah, they're all done. They're all out. You've seen they're them fresh all. out. So sure. you go back to an old episode, maybe some Dateline, <laughs> Keith Morrison, The Ultimate. And then, yeah. you, you know, eventually you're like, you know what? I'm going to, you know, hmm. I'm going to improve myself. <laughs> I never paid attention to history. And yeah. you start watching World War II. And I'm, it feels like when the turtles come out of the baby turtles go to the sea. You're just What's like, up with this Hitler guy everyone's been talking about? Yes. What's going on with Hitler? It, it's, you're fascinated by yeah. the horror of it. Yeah. You're drawn in by it. But also, at least for me, there's a real <laughs> idiot sense of like, I'm improving because <laughs> I'm studying history. Right, you're learning stuff. You're learning stuff. And so, yeah, yeah that is that is part of the phase. Uh, is, is, it's, it's, a, it's a phase. It's a dad evolution because my father... Uh, always with the World War II, always with the communism. Tom's father, uh, rest in peace, Top Dog, 
obsessed with war and war strategy and you know what happened in this battle and da 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 yeah yeah it's incredible like yeah but i'll tell you you i gotta text tom you guys gotta get into it because i my thing right now is reddit ukraine war report okay for dads out there (laughs) Don't stay in that musty old distant fucking past. Dive into World War Three, baby. While it's fresh. Fresh baked bread. Well, so you're telling me there's so the oh, here's the neat thing is like do you get to see real photos and videos like in real time? It's neat. Wow. <laughs> Well, can I tell you why I like TikTok, which what? is where I get all my information, truly. Like, this is how I started with the UFO stuff. I saw a clip of David Grush giving his News Nation interview about the aliens, and I was like, wait, this guy seems like a real fucking human. This isn't some cousin yeah. fucker in Tennessee. That's right. Like, this guy's real. Anyway, uh, that's how I learned about everything in the world. Like, during the pandy, I would fucking watch tiktok and see people in brooklyn being like right now these are dead bodies or in ambulances from covid yeah. and you're like oh my god no one's showing that yeah so that's really cool though i didn't i didn't put it together that reddit you always have to join with reddit and i don't want to join i don't them. think with the ukraine war report I've, i don't think i've had to join but i have joined reddit i don't know i mean i have no. an account but i no. i can't remember but yeah you just i like i haven't I, honestly I'm, I'm kind of like out of step with it but like I the Reddit with say, what's going on well, in the war. You're so deeply entrenched in what is it Diablo Four right now. You've got your other battles you're fighting. Right. You know that's part of my by my cycle yogic cycle of going sure. to bed is I play <laughs> Diablo Four until my eyes get blurry, and then I go on Reddit Ukraine War <laughs> Report and fall asleep and have horrific nightmares until I wake up with a kid pounding on my door. It sounds right. It sounds about right. That's perfect. Yeah, but it's weird. I don't know why we like that shit. I mean, I think it's it's like, I don't know what that is. I, and I remember being so hmm. bored with it when my dad would watch yeah. any kind of like historic war, war footage. But we, we do like it. You guys love it. The violence or I don't know. I don't know. It's not from, I mean, I like, I like, I don't like World War II, but I say it is fascinating because you're like, you can't wrap your head around it. You're like, wait, these atrocities? Wait, what, dude? And then they built these what? And then that what? Yeah. It's so wild. And then, uh, yeah, it's crazy just to see it hit history repeating itself over and over again, too. I know. It's like, so fucked up. It's so fucked what? up. It's very strange. I, maybe there's some, like, power fantasy, like, you know, like, you know, we like Genghis Khan. Like, most dads will get into, like, if, if, some kind of sure. Geng- Genghis Khan. What's his name? The incredible podcast, Hardcore History. Oh, okay. Dan Carlin. Oh, y- get that. oh it's so good. But you will get caught up in some, like, you know... Uh, moment in history where there was an uh, insane battles, and I think there's a an odd <laughs> fantasy where you like you you ponder what would I have been like as yeah. Julius Caesar? Uh, yeah, I see that. You know what I mean? Like uh, that? Like what would that War have been strategies. like? Yeah, it's kind of like white guys with nunchucks. Like there's always a point where you did you ever have a pair of nunchucks? Of course. <laughs> Of course. In your apartment, you were like, da, da, look at this girl. But, like, did you show your girlfriends your nun? No. Uh, As a kid, that was a kid thing. I honestly, I avoided white, the nun, nunchaku or whatever face. Is it, sorry, I'm sorry, am I mispronouncing It's actually it? nun. I only know that from, <laughs> from karate class with my kids. But uh, there's a weird name for them. It's nunchaku. I don't understand. It's I mean, fucking dunk it. It's a weapon, that? it seems like. Well, it's an impractical. It's going to bounce and hit your face and... <laughs> Put it under your arm, that weird armpit <laughs> catch, bring it back full of your stink, smack your opponent in the face with some pheromones. <laughs> I would like to share with you, Doug, some photographs. I don't know if your children are at the age where they take your iPhone. Uh, I don't know. This is like standard toddler ish where they take your iPhone and they take photos and you'll have like 20 of the same photo. Okay, yeah, that does. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. that does happen. Sure. <laughs> um, so this was these were some photos taken of me by my uh-huh. uh, five year old. I just wanted to share. It's really nice, right? That looks. That one's good. And I'm like mid sentence talking to somebody. I just woke up. It's in the kitchen. It's artistic. There you go. That one looks really. Good. <laughs> it's you know it's you got to look deep into this. Like, you know, this is art yeah. photography. It is. Like I think that there's something going on here. Let's watch the He's series. Very artistic. Next. <laughs> okay. I see. I get the message. It looks good. And boom. There yeah. you go. No, there's a it's he's there's something deep here. There's sure. like his choice of that <laughs> slight angle to it 
Is is he editorializing? Is there some commentary? What's I he think saying? So he's he is he's a deep guy. He's working on many levels. That's so funny. I want to do an entire art series of pictures my toddlers take of me. That would be incredible. I know. It's all bad a photos. Ga- a gallery? <laughs> yes. You should do that. I will. Because he does. We, I gave my children Polaroids, too, and they take pictures around the house. Maybe I'll uh, I'll do an art, in, a dart, art gallery. That would be super funny and cool. Yeah. Just bad, bad pictures of yourself. Oh, God. I I don't, you know, that. you got. My, look, and I'm sorry if this is pandering. Yeah. You moms are too fucking hard on yourselves. I've never oh, seen anything it's like it in my life. You guys brutalize yourselves. It's terrible. It's crazy. Well, I think Those it, are fine pictures. I know, but I think it's because you go from being a person to being like two people's person. Like you're right. you're the person, you're the source. And you don't really have as much time as you did for like normal right. woman things. Right. And then before it was just all me all day long. And, you know, and now you're like, oh, I must be deficient in that area because I'm not working on it as much. But I, I don't really care. Also, at the same time, we, I mean, we talked about this before we rolled. I'm, I just turned 47 and I'm I'm like looking down the barrel of 50 and I'm like, fucking, this is wild. But at the same time, it's very liberating because you're like, I don't, I don't care. It's kind of fun to be yourself more and more and more the more you go with it. You're like, I'm yeah. fucking weirding out harder and harder. It's, By the time I'm 70, I'm going to be fucking insane. I think it's, it's the, gonna be great. one of the most punk rock things out there. Right? Like, I think it's, it is so hardcore. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is like a weird thought I had. I, we're, I, I was at a pool. Sure. There's a diving board. Mm-hmm. And I am watching people, like, jump off the diving board into the pool and like doing flips and backflips and some people are afraid and some people are doing like like crazy shit cannonballs yeah. belly flops and i thought oh my god if you fast forwarded human life it's essentially a diving board where we're jumping into death and the, the in the in the air we do these little like tricks that are our lives right it's a trick you're doing a very quick yeah, blowing my, my mind you bro. might belly flop you might cannonball you might be one of those assholes who does like three triple back flips and has abs or whatever but no matter what how cool your trick is you're gonna land in the yeah. water and someone else is right behind you to do another trick and no one's thinking about your trick after no. you hit the water and so i think you know parenting what's cool about it is that you're leaving more people to go on the diving board. Know. You know what I mean? It's not just about you doing your fancy ass thing and your your whatever the fuck it is, your nunchucks or your <laughs> your private plane or whatever. It's it's like you know what I mean? There's yes. you're like you're 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 helping this like wonderful, incredible, beautiful, heartbreaking game continue on and on and and you have to give up a part of yourself for that can i tell you the best part of it though the narcissistic part that i fucking love is watching my kids develop a sense of humor and when it aligns with mine oh, i'm yeah. like yes oh yeah this is what i'm fucking talking about like the fact that like you know what i'm saying like now we can laugh at the same shit i'm like oh this is all i've wanted like to put Yes. And I, I'm just, I like putting that in the world where you're like, oh, good. At least you'll have a good sense of humor to get you through the shit show of, of existence. Yes. Like, you're going to need that. Oof, you're so much. You're going to need that. It's yeah. incredible when they, when they actually start pulling off like actual jokes. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's rad. It's ama- and watching them light up because they realize they have elicited yeah. legitimate laughter yeah. from everyone and like we're seeing in them yeah. what's in us it's really it's cool rad. yeah it's really really I like cool. that yeah and my youngest turned five which is fucking praise a lot like now we're out praise of the, the thank you out of the um fucking the dysregulated toddler years mm-hmm. and and like they're you know, they're able to regulate their emotions a bit better right. at five. And I'm like, fucking finally, dude. Like, I just realized I did the math. Like, I've been experiencing tantrums for seven years. Jesus, God. I know. And it's like at the point where nature knows I'm about tapped out. Right. Like, this bitch can't take another tantrum because I opened the popsicle package and he didn't want me to open it that way. And now, that you know, is you know what wild. I mean? like, What'll trigger a tantrum is wild. <laughs> wild <laughs> to watch them go from like completely like ecstatically happy to like on like on falling on the floor yeah. as though they just heard like a meteor is about to yeah. impact 
earth in five minutes like complete defeat despair <laughs> and then like if you fall for that shit yeah you'll overreact but then when you realize like they'll be fine in less than yeah, two minutes it's a wave it's a wave i know and to not react and sometimes it's so hard to not get into the reaction game of like dude shut the fuck up like just i actually get more into def i get more defeated than i get angry I think Tom tends to be more like, what are you doing? Like he gets more upset. Yeah. And I just get into like, God, my life is fucking, I'm going to die. Oh God. Like I go into like oh, You're, despair. It's just, well, it's, I mean, so it, it's like being next to a volcano, <laughs> uh, like I a know. psychic volcano. You're <laughs> these, it, I believe in past lives. I think you're watching like a fissure open up and just like, you're not, they're not screaming about the popsicle stick. They're oh. screaming because in some past life, they watched their family get trampled by elephants right oh. before they died. Or who knows what's go, what's coming out of that. It's, it's, it could be the popsicle, but I, I, it could be many, many now, things. Now, hold on. Let's discuss this because you and I now are alien aficionados together and we, we share in a, a consciousness, right? So you're telling me that, like, humans are whatever. We all take a piece of this big consciousness. Is that Am I getting this kind of... Well, I mean, there are so many angles right. on it. I mean, and, and, like, there's lots of different, like, descriptions of why or what it is. Or, you know, Christian mysticism, you could find this oh, idea. But I'm talking about the TikTok version. That's the one I know. What's the... So you no, tell I'm me your version. <laughs> no, that's all I know. Sorry. That's what I'm saying. It's like we all take part in... Uh, whatever consciousness we're what all a think? piece of it yeah but but the idea that we do we have memory of the past that's what you're saying that we have some kind of unconscious memory of the past yeah i mean there's yeah. this stuff has been documented in, in really in non -woo, woo y ways i think what is it called many lives many masters yeah, yeah 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 i remember that you can i you know if you want to go pure boring ass scientific materialist you could look at like the research in epigenetics which is the sort of biological explanation of reincarnation, which is like you have encoded in us mm. some kind of shit from our like did potentially distant ancestors that somehow locked in there. They that like so, you know, you think you have trauma True. because of something that happened to you. It could be ancestral trauma from your so great grandfather true. locked in there. So yeah, I think when you're witnessing the tantrum, that's what you're seeing. It's just like huh. the ancestors screaming. You don't know what happened to them. It's just blowing out of them. Also, you should be more careful about how you open popsicles. You know, <laughs> do you not love your kids? I put on white gloves. I put on white gloves, and <laughs> and and I have a special table. And at eight fifteen, I pull my popsicles <laughs> out, arrange them on the table, all the colors. I flatten out the plastic because yeah. they do not like to have crumpled plastic. No. And then no. using an exacto <laughs> knife, which is the same knife that I use to chop up the lines of methamphetamine I snort when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> I gently slice the plastic yep. out. Yep. And then yep. I offer yeah. the popsicle yeah. to my children. Yeah. I don't hand it to them. Don't you I'll dare. Let them take the popsicle. Oh yeah, are your kids fighting yet among the infighting? Yeah. That's a whole thing, yeah. Totally. I mean, I fight in phase. And, and learning how to like you you can't you need to step in sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you can't step in. They got to work it out. For sure. And, and and I've got, you know, all like I I have a big brother and like I I want my kids to not feel like they're competing with each other. I want don't want them to feel like there's a golden child or a this kid is better than that kid, which can, I think, accidentally happen. Oof, you know what scary. I mean? So I, tr I, I, I try to like keep everything pretty balanced. But then also it's like, they do need to learn to share. Like you can't be a no. fascist and force them to share every time. Like you have to let them work it out too. For sure. Oh, for sure. Or even like something that just belongs to one kid. It's like, dude, some shit's just gonna be for that kid. You know what I'm saying? Like. If you won that at the arcade from your hard labor of earning tickets or whatever, like I'm not gonna fucking make you share that with your shitty brother who did not even fucking earn those tickets play, playing skee ball. You know what I mean? It hurts because you see the little one and their feelings <laughs> are know, hurt. And you don't I want know. their feelings to be hurt because you're like, I know what that feels like. I was a little I one know. too and I wanted the thing. And you know, so it's about, it's, you know, and also it's like, God, I like, you know, you, you can accidentally get coercive, you mm. know, and I, like, I, I, I don't remember, I think it's David Graeber, maybe, I can't remember, some philosopher was talking about how, you know, what's better? You, you tell your kid, hey, 
you're coming to your grandmother's house. And the kid says, I don't want to go. And you say, well, tough shit. You're going to your grandmother's house. <laughs> right. Or you you're, say, you're going to your grandmother's. You say, do you want to go to your grandmother's house? And the kid says, no, I no. don't want to go to my grandmother's house. And so then you go, okay, I guess your grandmother who loves you so much will not get to see you today. Oh God, you know what I mean? And then, so that you so fucking evil. exact from that. them the right response and pretend they made a, a choice. I hate that. Yeah, and it, I've, you know, I found myself doing that the other day and realized like, oh my fucking God, I'm doing the thing. I'm using like coercive manipulation oh to God. get the kid to, to, when I should have just been a tyrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just be like, so you know, yeah, I just be like, yeah, I don't want to go either. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Exactly. Today. I'm like, I don't want to do this either. By the way, I feel like I have to say this. Let's just go. They love their grandmother, and they they love going to her house. This I don't. I would. It would be Whenever mortified if she her. if she saw this. Yeah, she got, they love. They She'll have a wonderful grandmother. Never you never, you never know. She won't. They, She's they, pretty they tuned in. in. Um, yeah, my grandmother. I never forget. God, this is like one of those memories. Fucking my cousin Shadi was over one time, and. Uh, I don't know, like we didn't want to do some shit that my grandma wanted us to do. And she threw herself on my bed and started to fake cry mm -mm. to manipulate. And I mm -mm. remember Shadi was younger than me and she was like, oh no, grandma, it's okay. And I go, no, don't fall for it. It's a ploy. <laughs> I'm like, she's manipulating you because my go. mother would do shit like that to me. And I was like, don't fall for this Hungarian lady ploy. You're They're right. just manipulating you. Yeah. That's oh, right. And they're God, teaching you to evil. manipulate. They're Ugh. teaching you to like Ugh. use these like like sneaky methods of dealing with people around you. And I, we all do it. It's just like, God, it's just, there's so much complexity in parenting in so many places Ugh. where like, even though you've God. read about how not, that you shouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, you're going to do it anyway. You're going to do some fucking form of it. Yeah. That that smells really good, by the way. I'm Is sorry. I'm tobacco? blowing it all over I don't you. care. It's tobacco with... Uh, Viagra. <laughs> it's so this is... This is <laughs> I'm taking tea. Yeah, Am no, I getting, no, this is incredible. Hard? Yeah, they finally figured out a way to uh, vaporize Viagra, which is like we've all That's been so looking. Awesome. It's the holy grail. Well, yeah, who needs to cure cancer when you can just vape Viagra? I'm sure you're pumped about that with your testicular cancer. Now you're like, I'd rather vape Viagra, Viagra than, than have a cure for stuff. We'll take that out. I don't want to remind people you had cancer. Sorry. <gasps> That was depressing. Take no, that. I was you trying to be funny. My brain's fried. You're so kind. You know Ugh. what? I try to make a joke. I'm too fried. Let me know. I, if you could take it out if you want, if you feel bad, but I will tell you this. As a testicular cancer survivor, oh, I so have had, no, you shouldn't be. And I think it's like, I, honestly, I listen, I think <sighs> every, nobody should feel or sh ashamed of, the, of, of, the, of what's going on oh, with God. their balls. People need to know, check your balls, guys. Check your balls, and, and and most testicular cancer survivors are like, look, check your fucking balls, and check, uh, your, balls. check your balls. Don't ignore it. If one of check. them swells up, don't ignore that shit. It sucks. More than likely, everything's gonna be fine. Check your balls. I don't care. Like when I post shit online, uh, like with my pregnant wife, and people are like, that one nut is working overtime. It doesn't bother me. It used to bother me a little bit, but now it doesn't bother me. I know, like if like a woman survived breast cancer was actually uh, more serious than testicular cancer which is which is one of the like if you're going to choose cancers that's one you might want to pick compared to breast cancer oh, but if you gosh. see a woman who's had a mastectomy oh god don't. breastfeeding you're not like whoa look at that tit work it on make it milk nice job with your one booby but it, 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 People forget, it, but it, 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 the internet's it, such a good place. But you know what? It, so I, amazing. I don't mind because, like, I, I do God. want people like to know you. You, you know, you got to back up ball. You got to back up ball. They're important. We have to. You got to back up, and that's that means so go cool. to the fucking doctor, dude. That's so wild. Like, you did you ever up. think that you'd make three children with that one nut? No, it's wild. Bro. I mean, and they don't act like you will. Like when you go in there, they're like. And they're you're, they're like we're got you know they they put essentially like a a, a a lead cod piece like they put this lead thing over your balls and dick to protect you from the right if you get radiation to protect mm. you from that and also 
they're like when you're getting the surgery they're like yeah you, we don't you have to go you have to go store your jizz because <laughs> they're like you if you were going to make any, any sense this. that you want to make kids you need to go get a backup yeah come yeah you gotta back your come you gotta freeze your come and that is the worst <laughs> masturbation session you will ever have in your life the saddest one where they're like you have cancer you're jerking off <laughs> in case you can no longer make cum that's terrible in a weird like facility that you never thought you'd go to that you made fun of in the past like you would think about uh, oh yeah dudes go in there and jerk off into a cup and look at porn ah, and then suddenly you're one of those dudes looking at shitty porn way worse than looking at your dad's porn <laughs> Oh, what is worse, porn? That's an interesting question. Your dad's porn or cum receptacle? Cancer, cancer, cum for cancer, cancer porn cum. is not yeah. the best porn. So you gotta like yeah. you. You're like, okay, well, I'm gonna have my one of my balls chopped off next week. Yeah. So let's see what we're gonna jerk off to. Feet, feet, porn or anal? You know what I mean? Like, how do you feel? You pick. I know Tom had to jizz into a cup because I did IVF for my second our second baby, and he's like. The nurse was, she, he tried to make jokes with the nurse and they were just, she was not having it. I've heard them all. It's so depressing. But they should have like hot nurses, don't you think? Like it should be a whole vibe when you're yes. doing that. It's, it's a really, it is a fucking weird thing to go into a sterile environment and jizz and you have to get aroused. Like they should make it arousing. You should be able to pay extra and have it be arousing all around they can't you know why they can't, why can't they fucking do they that they can't do that why because then the people who legitimately need to go in there and save their cum would have to wait seven months for all the dudes who just want to get jerked off and are like how much is it a hundred dollars you never get in there'd just be a wait list for that forever they would have dumpsters out back full of cum receptacles as the guys leave and are like yeah just throw it away I don't want to save that shit. I just wanted a hand job. Thank you. I'll be back tomorrow. Do you have any availabilities tomorrow? Yeah, they can't. But there are so many medical experiences they could make fucking nicer or just more inviting. Like, a, you know. I know. God they figured damn. it out with massage. How come they haven't figured right. it out with like removing an appendix? Right. Or getting your mammogram done. Like it's always got to be some unattractive fatso grabs my tits and puts it in the squisher like. Why can't it be an attractive young Puerto Rican male, a 23 year old guy? There's techs out there that are yeah. 23 hot Euro, hot Puerto Ricans that they can do my mammogram. I think you just solved the health crisis. <laughs> like if a hand job was at the end of a checkup, yeah. we would all it's be. So <laughs> <laughs> It, it, yeah. would, it yeah. would be like just outside, yes. everyone in shape, everyone <laughs> healthy. Everyone like excited to schedule their next checkup. Their colonoscopy. Every, if you wake up to a hand job. Oh my god! Everybody would do it. You figured it out. This is the answer. <laughs> my God, are you kidding? I would be like <laughs> signing up. Like, yeah, you have your colonoscopy booked every year. You, you know, just know, Aaron. I kind of feel like I should go in for another colonoscopy. I know I just had one yesterday, but you know, I just want to make sure they got everything. <laughs> <laughs> But it would cause problems. It would cause, because like your wife would keep going, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I mean, going to get another checkup, huh? <laughs> wow, fifth one this week. But but it would go for the women, too. Like I said, like your mammogram would be way better, your pap smear. You know, those are, I don't know if you can make those better. That is just a horrendous. How about at least make it dark in there? How about that? Can you just at least make mood lighting yes. for a fucking pap smear? Like, at least make the room nice. It's, what? So How about depressing. rename it? Uh, the, the name is disgusting. Smear? Like, what, you have a medical procedure with smear in I it? I know. What, what should they smear? call it? Like a, a fiddle D check or a, fu a fun time. A, anything. Anything. Licorice whip. Just something that's yeah, not. A licorice whip. Yeah, get your licorice whipped. Go in for a licorice whip. At least then you're not going in for something that sounds like something they put on bagels <laughs> in hell. So you want to pap schmear on your human flesh bagel <laughs> it's disgusting sound it's, it's disgusting that, it speculum is disgusting it's all disgusting speculum it's called the speculum where they put they insert it used to be metal and now they finally wrap their stupid dodo brains and they make it plastic so it's not cold and th this device has been around since like the fucking 1500s i've I seen porn with it. this in it yeah it's this i hate that porn yeah so they put this in your meow and then they open it up they lock it up 
They lock it open, and that's how the doctor comes in and takes a smear of your of your bagel. This is how you could tell. It's disgusting. That that that. that in the past that it was dudes running yeah like that's a guy came up with that of course like we'll just shove a thing in there open it up i was just watching a duck yeah <laughs> and i was thinking what if i shove that duck bill in someone's pussy and could figure out a way to get the duck to keep his mouth open a hundred percent a hundred percent how i mean it looks like a dick Everything looks like dicks, rockets, buildings, airplanes, and speculums. Do you get into that again? stuff, the Freudian idea that of it's course. like all dicks? Everything's dicks and pussies. This is why we exist. Everything is unconsciously dicks and pussies. And, okay. So of course. Can we, I, I don't know how much how long this podcast goes, but I think it's important to, to, to note something that just happened culturally, which is really interesting. Go to ahead. Me. Elon Musk and Zuckerberg. Literally, aliens, both aliens, by they, the way, both aliens, but they got in an argument about how big their dicks are. No, yes, I'm pretty sure if I'm if I'm saying this, I might be wrong about this, but Musk didn't Musk and like Bezos both have this weird rocket ship thing, which was literally like they were rushing to see whose dick <laughs> could get into space first. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? As someone who's, yes. who studied psychology in school and you're watching, it's like, yes. my fucking God. Yes. It's like, it's got, this is a dick. Literally. To impregnate the void. To fuck the, the sky. Yeah, yeah. To fuck, to fuck the, 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 star, uh, sorry, space. Who they fucks the sky their... first? Yeah. They put William Shatner yeah. in the tip of a dick mm -hmm. and gave him like six <laughs> seconds to look at the earth mm -hmm. and fly back down. He's in a billionaire's mm -hmm. dick. Very, well, very weird. It's interesting you say that because Elon, even in that, that Netflix documentary about SpaceX, he says, he says, or I don't know if it was in that or some other clip, I wanted this rocket ship to look like a big dick in the sky. He literally, he has a good sense of humor. At right? least he admits it. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Just admit it. Like, yeah. he, like he, once you admit it, it's fine. Like admit you want your spaceship to look like a giant dick. Yeah. I love that. Penetrating the void. I love it. Impregnating I, it with humanity. I love it. I love dicks. I love pussies. I don't, the speculum thing I do, every time I go to get my pap smear, I'm like, they haven't figured out a better way for this. It has to be. This is stupidity. This is so uh, intrusive and terrible. Yeah. it's. I'm I mean, still upset about the fucking speculum. It's fucked up. It There's doesn't sound good. There's be a better way. None of it sounds good. Speculum, pap smear. It just I sounds know. like a horrible menu at a dark restaurant it's too dark and they have to open you up so wide like can't you just open it up like a t a, a, a smidge a, sm a smidge not the fucking no you gotta crank it up <sighs> and you gotta open it up all the way terrible they treat you like an animal especially when you're pregnant too like you're poor lady i remember when they check you when you're a neighbor some doctor check you and like it's like ah, like it just feels like needles because you're you've like your hormones are i don't get it it's terrible i don't it's get terrible. it i don't get it at all i don't understand why western medicine hasn't figured out like the psychological component of getting checked out like why do they need to make everything so severe and alien and like completely emotionless and it's like you you do you feel like a robot or something when you go in there they're just so emotionless and in a hurry and also they're you know like not to bring it back to applebee's but <laughs> as a server one of your jobs is to try to sell more shit Sure, you have to upsell. The they upsell. Meet, you have meetings when yeah. they have a chart with who sold the most shit. So mm -hmm. you upsell. Mm -hmm. In Western medicine, they got to upsell you. Mm -hmm. So they will suggest, they will emotionally manipulate you For sure. into scans you don't need, shit you don't need, because there is like a, a, a cash incentive behind that. Of course. And I'm pretty sure the people working in these clinics, I'm sure there's some record of how much money they made and it's like did you talk them into the the, <laughs> the golden speculum the designer speculum the gucci speculum if they made a chanel one really yeah i like that one why not i mean why at not? least that at least have a or nice just, chanel speculum why can't they make a speculum soft even I don't know. anything they, they've made dildos that can uh, operate remotely right aren't there dildos that can fucking sing songs and Yes. Uh, rabbits and beads and they've got everything and they, they can't figure out a fucking speculum. speculum. They still have something that looks like it was fabricated yeah. by someone in prison. <laughs> Gonna whip up a speculum. I got some old aluminum scraps from the cafeteria. <gasps> oh, this is gonna be a good speculum. You better watch out. I'm gonna widen that ass.
<laughs> Fucked up, man. We gotta work on that. We gotta work on that. I love you so much. Listen, we gotta love go. You. We gotta go home. I thank you so much for for coming here. I can't wait to do your podcast. Can't wait. Uh, if yeah, just we'll figure out next week if you have time. Uh, yeah, whenever I'll make time. It's for remote. You. you don't even have to go anywhere. I love and you. We will go deep into the aliens. Ugh, I'm so yes! fucking tired, man. You're the best. I love love you. you. Thank you so much for any time y'all need. You know, I live just down the street. So anytime you need somebody, I'll be here. I love you, Duncan. Raytheon, what else are you plugging? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, you know, there has never been a better time to work for Raytheon. (laughs) I just want to point this out. Like some shit floated on the internet. Yeah. Listen, in any (laughs) factory, there's accidents. It's true. Our robots have... That's true. Been completely reprogrammed. That's true. They are no longer attacking <laughs> the scientists testing them. Please check out Raytheon and, <laughs> and consider like joining the Raytheon, becoming a member of the Raytheon team. And I got a lot of dates coming up, yeah, everybody. Plug your dates. I'm gonna man. be I'm gonna be uh, at Cobbs. Oh, I love Cobbs. Say what's up to Molly. Yeah, I love my I love that club. When are you so going? I got to look. It's so bad. I have to look. Okay, I have something I want you to give Molly. Just, I oh, her. I okay. bought her a gift a million years ago and like, I keep, okay. Sorry. Happy I to. You. Yeah. Cobbs. Cobbs uh, and so like lots of other places. They're all going to be at DuncanTrussell.com. But this is not going to happen for a while because, you know, we're doing a baby, baby right now. But, yeah. you know, come September, I'm back out on the road. So by the time this comes out, just go to DuncanTrussell.com and you can find all my dates. And I would be so honored if you would come see me perform. And what's your podcast called? So they know what it's you're... called the uh, Raytheon Experience. <laughs> Duncan and, Trussell experience? No, it's it's just we... Are t- we doing... Is it the same one? Duncan Trussell family years? hour. That's, yeah, that's right. Uh, but anyway, see Duncan Trussell live. Listen to his podcast. Worship him as your guru. Please. I love you so much, Duncan. Thank love you for you. being here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we're friends. I know. Uh, bye, guys. Bye. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye, bye moms. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.